Hey! So I make a recording with binaural directly to camera. I'm not sure if this works. It should work. I made a tiny tweeter. So a 3D printed um, frame. And it works. I'll show you later because I'm gonna disassemble it so you can see. Uh, it's a bit like the car for one. It's only driven from the back. So it ha only has magnets on the back. And yes, it's a quite large tweeter. But the funny thing should be that it can reach quite low as well. <clears throat> so uh, let me see if I have a measurement of the tweeter alone. So this is the whole speaker and most distortion here is the stupid data and driver. I'll disable the data and driver, do a measurement of the tweeter alone so you have an idea of what it's doing. It has a CD as a baffle, of course, because that's the way I do it. It's really nice, really ugly. Yeah, so it's crossed at 24 dB per octave at, I believe, 500 something, 600. Ooh, even lower. Is that true? That's not correct. Should be a bit higher. Well, anyhow, uh, yeah, you could cross it really low. Uh, distortion rises here, but it's mostly a second order. So I'm not too worried about it. I could do a song and then I'll explain what I did. I have some troubles with my equipment. My, I wanted to etch these membranes and I'll explain why later on. Uh, so I tried two methods I used before and both are f a fail because my equipment is fucked or broken. Not sure what happened, but I'll explain. I'll do a song, a simple, fast song. It's, uh, I guess I will be sitting like this. I don't know. Feels weird. I never do it like this. range of these datums is really shitty. I don't know what's happening there. Let me show what the tweeters do. So they do quite a lot. Sigaret 
blah 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 blah. Now the thing with this is it's a it's not a, a stretch membrane, so it's like a small piece, slightly corrugated. This one had an encounter with a screwdriver, so the other one I should have filmed the other one, but this is the screwed up one. So I wanted to make a new membrane. Now this membrane consists of mylar and aluminium tape. Now you can see the traces are quite small, and it's it's amazingly annoying to put this on and get it off the cutting table without um, the actual aluminium foil falling off. Also the tape I used is 40 millimeter and that's the maximum width. There is no wider roll available in this thickness. So um, yeah what I did I thought well I go back to using this blue stuff which is thinner uh, at least the aluminium is uh, thinner and uh, I'll go back to my laser part laser etching because I had some success but I never used it because mostly it's not I don't have to use it it's not very useful for me since I make usually bigger panels these are tiny and it's all about resistance now my laser let's see if we can You see that white in the middle of that lens, so within the um, messing thing. That's a cracked lens. So I was wondering why it didn't work. I could not, it, it looked shit and I could not remove the paint. It, it just didn't go away. And I was like, how, how come? I mean, a few days back, I cut the foamy bits for this one with that exact same laser. I did notice uh, it was smoking a little bit much because I had the power high and the speed too slow. So I hope so. Uh oh, I hope it's not like accumulating on the lens uh, all the smoke and uh, you know, like making it black or whatever. But it went well, so I thought, well, should be fine. So I might, I might have screwed up my lens there. So I coated it kind of with soot, and then uh, the glass became so hot it, you know, it bursted and bubbled, and now my lens is fucked, and I did not notice. So I was playing around with it like half a day, well, actually, a, a night, half a night. Then I thought, well, let's take a look at the lens. Well, the lens is screwed. So I was like, okay, that's shit. I order a new lens. So uh, I hope the diodes are not fucked inside because I also have to replace this whole unit or maybe buy a new laser. But I think even if they are kind of fucked, I think this thing will perform much better without like a huge crack in the middle of the lens and uh, a huge white spot where, where no light can transmit through almost. So then I thought, well, I'll go back to my beloved Phaser solid ink printer. Now today I have this machine taken apart like eight times. So the sensor from the the sensor from the waste bin, which is uh, here, it wastes a lot of ink. Well, we cannot see it, but it's all in the back, and I cannot reach in. There's no way. I have to strip the whole machine to get to that sensor. It came off the place it should be staying, and now it's not picking up if this uh, thing is in there. So I located the wiring and shorted it out so it looks for him that there is a tray in there. And that, well, I put a tray in there. Okay, so all went when? Well, then it was the tray is full 
sensor that was fucking up. It's the same sensor, so I had to short that one out. And then... Then it had problems with the ink loader. Uh, I cannot fix that one. I don't know what it is. Might have to replace the whole thing. And this thing was already a piece of shit. I had to like maybe print 10 times before it actually started printing and wasting a lot of ink and whatever. This thing is done for. Too bad. <laughs> Not sure what to do with it because I cannot dump it in my bin. It weighs like 30 kilos or something, <laughs> 25, I don't know, a lot. But uh, yeah, fail after fail. Uh, there was one company I know of that did resell these refurbished or secondhand with like the counter on display of how many pages they uh, printed. And it happens to be that this company is away or the owner is away for a month or three. So he disabled his side. So I'm not sure if he still sells them. I might take a look and I'll take, if I take one, because first I wait for my lens. I mean, I think that's the more cleaner option. Else I can't get a newer facer ink yet. Solid ink. Maybe that one serves me for a, a few years more. I don't know. Uh, it should have like twice the DPI. So that could be nice and interesting. This one has 1200 and the other has 2400. And the ink is also bulkier and cheaper. And hopefully it, it, it works. This one was already secondhand eight years ago and it was already kind of fucked. And now after playing with it for four hours or five hours, this is it. It's done. Bye bye, Facer. I loved your heat in my computer room. It was really nice having no heater in here, just a printer that heats the whole room. <laughs> it's funny, they say it is really green. Hardly any waste. Well, I don't know. This is uh, from uh, one time putting the printer on. That's quite a lot of waste, if you uh, ask me. And it produces so much heat. There's no way this is more efficient than a laser printer that only revs up for like one minute or not even 20 seconds, poops out a print and then goes in standby. This one has to be hot all the time because otherwise you cannot print. This thing, uh, I had it on for like years and then I put it out. It even, you know, it was noticeable on my electricity bill. So this thing is not at all efficient or green. The only thing they do is use solid ink, wax, which is very nice in my case, because that's why I bought it. But all the other claims, nah, I don't know. Not true. <clears throat> so anyhow, that was a very, uh, maybe uninteresting update. Oh yeah, also I, uh, I did my first 3D prints and I must say, if you're paying a little bit of attention on how you print it, this looks rather good. It's a weird other kind of tweeter I put in there, but way wider, but that's quite cool. And the other one, I was not so nice because I changed speed. And you can see that, the, oh, wait, wait, yes, I changed speed. So the bottom half looks different compared to the top half. Top half looks nicer, I think, a matte finish. I like that better. But yeah, so apparently you have to decide what kind of speed you're gonna use and not like speed it up during the print. Uh, to me, actually, that was kind of a, I probably know that, but I did not think of it at that time. Also made some sort of horn thingy printed, but cost you half a roll of <laughs> filament. Anyhow, um, so yeah, I am playing around again, finally, because I had so, le so little energy, I didn't do anything. Today, I did a lot but managed to 
do actually nothing because nothing worked. But, you know, those kind of days, everything is fucked and broken. Uh, actually, I did not sleep until 10 o'clock this morning because I couldn't sleep for three hours and I thought, ah, fuck it, then I'm gonna fix this. Then that was broken, etc., uh, etc. Et so kind of weird. I did not sleep that much tonight. But at least I'm busy again, which I do like. Um, oh yeah, the reason why this is easier to print because the traces are so small. It's, it's easier to etch it than cut it in this case. Cutting like the bigger panels is much nicer for big panels. If it has to be really small, then etching might be interesting because you can do like six tweeters in an A4 paper size, for instance. And then it it's worth the hassle with acid and etc. Um, if it was for only one, it's not the uh, it's not useful. It's annoying. It's stinky. It's dirty. And uh, it costs me usually um, clothing because I never <laughs> put on something old before I um, smear all kinds of acid on them. Well, see you later. Bye bye.